Welcome back to History Chatter. In this episode, I'll tell you a similar story. This one's about someone even bigger, Winston Churchill and his cigar. So, Second World War had been going on. Winston Churchill was the Prime Minister of Britain and he had to be kept fit and healthy all the time. But he had two small weaknesses. One was for French liquor and the other was for Havana cigars. Unfortunately, in the early 1940s, Germany had been doing rather well in the war. Hitler's wolf packs wrought havoc on the trade routes across the Atlantic. Not more than 20 or 30 percent of ships in a convoy could reach England from the American East Coast. There were critical shortages of everything in England, including Churchill's favorite Havana cigars, hand-rolled Havana cigars. So housekeeping officers at 10 Downing Streets um, were terribly worried. Where do they get the supplies of Havana cigars for their beloved Prime Minister? There'd been all kinds of back-channel conversations going on. And one of them happened to confide to their counterpart in India office. Now, cigars from Trichy or Trichy cigars from Madras were known to be fairly comparable in quality with Havana cigars. So messages were exchanged between London and New Delhi and between New Delhi and Fort St. George in Madras. Ultimately, the governor of Madras agreed to take personal responsibility for the project. He personally selected two reputed and loyal cigar manufacturers of Trichinopoly. Now, these cigar manufacturers were sworn to utmost secrecy to produce the best quality Trichy cigars for a Bada Sahib in England. To handle the affair, the governor required an intelligent English speaking person as an assistant. He needed to have intimate knowledge of cigar making and their quality. In fact, he had to be a cigar tester. Now, obviously, this was not a normal clerical position. So nothing really could be disclosed about the project. By exercising his discretionary powers, under the defense of India rules, the governor himself created a special position of an assistant. The position was called a CCA. It was located in the chief secretary's secret cell. No one but the governor, the chief secretary and the incumbent, that is the guy who walked in that position, knew the real meaning of CCA. So there was an air of mystic which surrounded that position. Many thought it stood for chief confidential assistant who probably dealt with some ultra secret missions. The flow of Trichy cigars from St. George to Whitehall began under the cover of secrecy and continued throughout the war. It was said that Churchill soon developed a fondness for the mildly aromatic Trichy cigar in preference to the heavy pungent smell of the Havana cigar. Now, Churchill's temper was thus maintained on a fine balance. In 1945, of course, Churchill lost the election and uh, he became the leader of opposition. The same housekeeping officer brought to the notice of the new prime minister, Clement Attlee, that it was high time to replace or do something about the supply of Trichy cigars to the former PM. Clement Attlee suggested quite happily that the supply should continue to the leader of opposition, who was also the shadow prime minister. And he added that the number might be slightly increased so that His Majesty's real prime minister might occasionally also enjoy a couple of puffs. The war ended, India became independent, supply of Trichy cigar 
to Whitehall stopped and everybody forgot about CCA of Fort St. George. In the early 1960s, the Madras government set up a P committee to review the P structure and the service conditions of its officers and staff. One day, a top secret double silt cover landed on the desk of the chairman. It was from CCA, Office of the Chief Secretary, Fort St. George, Madras. Relationships between the chairman and the finance department had already become sour. So the chairman wondered whether the double sealed cover contained his marching orders. With some amount of concern, he opened the cover and he found, to his relief, a very humble and polite note for upgrading the post of CCA to that of office superintendent in um, the chief secretary's office. So this guy, he continued to be paid for 20 years. He had absolutely no work to do. And he became an honorable public servant under the government of India. Now, what happened to that position is another story and we did not get into that. That's episode two of History Chatter Quick Takes. Please tell us um, your experiences with the bureaucracy. Please subscribe to History Chatter. And my producer tells me that if I can get 100 likes for this episode, he'll make me do a larger episode on some of these themes in future. Thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing you in the next Quick Takes episode of History Chatter. Bye-bye.